wokeness, the first word in the title of this, wokeness hobbles Disney as it faces the streaming challenge. And I'm like, and, oh boy. Well, and let me say this too. Disney's actually coming out on the good end of this because, if you can believe it, mm-hmm. because it's not just streaming that is uh, being killed by wokeness. So thank goodness for Disney, for their sake, that this is just narrowly defined to the streaming side of things. Uh, yeah. Yeah, so let's kind of go through this. Um, I have a printed copy here because reading this on the screen it makes my eyes go cross. Um, but if you all want to find this article yourselves in the Wall Street Journal, we can. Um, when revenue is declining anyway, it doesn't help to alienate half of your audience with political posturing. Ow. Hmm. Again, opening line. I mean, this is, I've never seen this from the Wall Street Journal. I mean, they're just going right into it saying, no, Disney... Your politics is wrecking stuff. Who wrote this article, and are they in the chat currently? That's what we need to know. (laughs) It's an article by Alicia Finley uh, with the Wall Street Journal, uh, or writing an op-ed for the Wall Street Journal. Uh, And again, they published it as it is. A lot of times you see these kind of things. They don't want to rock the boat, but they did it here. Uh, Disney CEO Bob Iger hinted this month that he might sell some of the company's cable channels on the heels of thousands of layoffs across the business's empire. Its stock has fallen by more than half in the past two years, and its streaming service is losing billions of dollars annually. There's no question that streaming has disrupted the economics of the TV and film industries, but Disney's forthcoming live-action remake of the 1937 animated classic, and I brought this up earlier for a reason, Snow White illustrates another business problem. Repeat that. Disney's forthcoming live-action remake of the 1937 animated classic Snow White illustrates another business problem. Disney has elevated progressive pieties over originality and tradition, which may be alienating its customer base. Well, when you've had a 70% reduction in your box office revenue from 2019 to 2023... You have a massive problem on your hands, and maybe it's time to stop playing with the uh, wokeisms and go back to traditional storytelling. Just, just a thought. You think? I think that might not be a bad idea, Pro. Um, but yeah, there you go. I'm just going to highlight that for you right there, so you can see right out of here. I'm reading this straight out of the article, folks. Unbelievable. And maybe, maybe <laughs> if your entire uh, corporate building, your headquarters has mm-hmm. these little dwarf characters holding up the building like they're the pillars. Yeah. If they're the symbolic pillars of your company, perhaps you should not disparage them and have a little 22-year-old goofball actress out there talking about how they're not modern. Yeah. Just, just a thought. Might be a problem. Uh, consider its 2017 live-action remake of Beauty and the Beast, which recasts Gaston's sidekick LeFou as gay. A 2022 Toy Story spinoff, Lightyear, included a scene of two lesbians kissing. The scene had been edited out but was restored after enough Disney employees complained that it had been censored. We all remember when that that started during House Bill 1557 of Florida and the Don't Say That Word Bill. And that was actually the lesser of the problems in that film, if you can believe it. I know. Disney Plus streaming service warns that animated classics such as Dumbo, Peter Pan, Jungle Book include, quote, the Disney Plus streaming service indicates this. Negative depictions and or mistreatment of people or cultures that, quote, were wrong then and are wrong now. Disney's saying about saying this about their own classic library on Disney Plus. Which essentially means they're saying it about Walt. That's what right. they're saying. Yes. Walt made these things. Thanks for the trigger warning, Disney, but most parents don't need to be hit over the head with things they already know. Yet that's what Disney newer films, along with... Most Hollywood productions do. They hit you over the head with left-wing cultural mores over and over again. Mr. Iger has attributed Disney's financial problems to the disruption from streaming. That's doubtless a part of it. As more Americans have cut the cord, Disney generates less revenue from cable and satellite. And at the same time, Americans are ditching theaters for their big screens at home, which cuts into box office revenue. And we can debate about that, as we have many times uh, why people are not going to the theater. When you have movies like this, or weekends like this, with movies like Barbie and Oppenheimer that are tearing it up, people are hungry for big box office stuff. Streaming has been giving us a lot of fluff and filler and very few really great things. The box office has had the same problem. Uh, in, most, in the most recent quarter, Disney's streaming business, which includes Disney+, ESPN, and Hulu, 
lost $659 million. Disney Plus alone lost 4 million subscribers. Now, granted, most of those are in India. Uh, most streaming services are struggling because their production costs exceed their subscription revenue. When cable dominated, people had to pay for channels whether they watched them or not. Now they don't. But Disney boasts an unrivaled catalog, which includes classic movies and TV shows that aren't available elsewhere. Mr. Iger in 2019 paid a cool $71.3 billion for most of 21st Century Fox, whose rich library, which includes The Simpsons and Avatar, was supposed to bolster Disney's nascent streaming service. Why isn't it doing any better? Mr. Iger has blamed overproduction, an industry-wide problem. It's true. The amount of new content is overwhelming and not well presented. Lineups of new shows and movies resemble dinner menus. Lots of choices, most of them mediocre. You have to try was, numerous... We were getting way too much Indiana Jones material. That's what sunk that one. <laughs> you have to try numerous dishes before finding one that hits the spot. Who has the time? Disney's classic options and audience base gives it an advantage over other streaming services. Parents are willing to pay a premium for content that is entertaining, educational, and most important, age-appropriate. Talked about this earlier with the Barbie movie when the ladies were here. Like Kara said, she enjoyed it. Most of this, you know, that stuff kind of went over her head. But when I asked her, <clears throat> was this movie made for young kids or was this movie made for older women? She's like, oh, no, this, this movie was definitely made for an older audience. But it's being marketed to young girls, to young kids, or really to everybody, which includes the young kids. Same problem with Disney here, folks. Disney is conceding this advantage to curry favor. Oh, excuse me. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Disney's classic options and audience base gives it an advantage over other streaming services. Parents are willing to pay a premium for content that's entertaining and, most important, age-appropriate. They don't want, parents do not want to have to screen uh, this stuff, yet Disney is conceding this advantage to curry favor with the cultural left. No doubt, many millennial parents don't mind if their toddlers see cartoon uh, ladies kissing, but others do. And many don't like how Disney is recasting the classics to exalt diversity for the sake of diversity and expunge anything that may offend uh, some, uh, quote-unquote, peasant sensibilities. I think they're using a bit of a tongue-in-cheek reference there. You know, I, I really think they're so. underselling what Disney has done that has driven away audiences. So, mm -hmm. you know, two women kissing, that, you know, I'm sure that would get some headlines. It did. Mm -hmm. The bigger problem here was that the two, the two women had kids. And... Mm -hmm. That's really confusing to little kids, and that's going to create this, you know, question mark that has to be answered on the ride home. Then Strange World brings up all kinds of questions. Yeah. Uh, you have the Little Mermaid situation now, where Disney has artificially created a black mermaid and white mermaid, and that it's even an issue inside their parks, right? Because which aerial do you want to go see? Okay, well, now you've created this juxtaposition that's racially motivated. Uh, and Disney continues to make very bad decision after very bad decision. Let's not forget that this is the same company that had videos leaked by independent journalist Christopher Rufo, where the head of the Proud Family cartoon, which, by the way, was some of the worst propaganda I've ever seen, she comes out and says that she has a not-so-secret agenda for children's programming. Exactly. That is what is happening to Disney. That is what perhaps was even a precursor to what we've seen with other companies like Target and a particular uh, alcoholic beverage company. Disney may have been the watershed moment. And I think people have uh, misconstrued that as being part of um, what's happened with Bud. But it's not Bud. It's Disney. Disney started this. Yeah. And 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 it, the, other, the other folks that you just mentioned made it, I think, more apparent, uh, especially when smashed right in the face of adults, right? Because, again, parents yeah, are not looking... That's what they're saying, and that's what they lament in this article, is that parents don't really watch what their kids are watching like they used to generations ago. And part of that is a level of trust that over time has been placed in the hands of Disney. Hey, my kid's watching something on Disney. It's fine. You know, reply by mail in the, in the chat brings up a great point. Mm -hmm. the, the Disney parks got rid of gendered language, mm -hmm. right? They can no longer say, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls... I have just been at the parks for a week. I, we have reporters from that park place who have been there for three straight weeks, mm -hmm. nonstop. Folks, I'm here to tell you, I'm tired of hearing friend because that's all the cast members can, can call you. And I'm, I'm legit now. I'm telling you, I, I, got, I got very 
unpleasant with a few cast members. And that never, ever, 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 ever happens. I am a very positive, very pleasant, very kind individual, especially with, with strangers, especially with people who are working and I know they're tired. But I'm ready to say that some of these people, I would prefer to be called sir, thank you. Please stop calling me friend because at some point you feel like you're in a cult. And th But this is, you know, when you've got a thousand micro bad decisions at this company, oh, they just man. all add up to being just, that's what's driven this thing down. Yeah, it, it is. It's it's death by a thousand cuts. I think you're, you're bang on with that one, pro. The, 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 the author of this article agrees with us, is my read. Many don't like how Disney is recasting classics to exalt diversity for the sake of diversity and expunge anything that may offend their peasant sensibilities, right? Just, just talking about the left. They're, they're, just, little, they're, they're inconsistent. And yeah. they're inconsistent in one prejudiced way. So yeah. the Little Mermaid, Danish, got to change that, right? Uh -huh. Snow White, German, got to change that, right? Mm -hmm. But if you were to change something out of uh, Wakanda in the opposite direction, all hell would break loose. Oh, yeah. That's why I said, I mean, is 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 Storm going to be played by a redheaded white girl now? I mean, I'm, we made the we made the joke about, oh, they're going to do a Tiana movie. Is is Karen Gillan taking that role? Because I mean, right now, exactly. do I want that to happen? No, Tiana's probably my favorite Disney princess now. Because hey, I'm sorry, it's a New Orleans grift. I love it, uh, and I'm all for it. Tiana's but, a cool character. I, I mean, that's that's the one that, of all the Disney princess films. I mean, Beauty and the Beast was wonderful. Lion King's a lot of fun. I love the music in Princess and the Frog, and I love the story. Uh, and Keith David's in it. How do you not like that? So I'm looking forward to Disney making that. I'm just worried what Disney's going to do to it. Uh, they're probably going to screw that one up all the hell. But by, the, by the way, we've got a super chat from Jay. I'm not saying put it on the screen right now, but when we get to it, I've got a great story, Jay, that you're going to want to hear. All right, hang tight on that one. Let's finish up this article here. Uh, <clears throat> Disney, now this is great. This is a great point that, they, that the author makes of this op-ed in the Wall Street Journal. Disney classics are classics because they discreetly impart virtues through parables. Yes. Where is that? Where have I heard that before? What other big book has done that in the past? I don't know. Uh, the Mirror on the Wall dubs Snow White the fairest of them all, not because of her skin color, but because of her magnanimous character, which she demonstrates in her kindness towards the dwarves. These days, Disney is hopping on the Hollywood bandwagon in trying to force-feed progressive virtue. The industry's problem is that streaming has eliminated its captive customer base, which production studio executives appear to understand, even if actors and screenwriters don't. Full stop. This was written the weekend the Barbie movie came out. Let me read that again for everybody in the chat. Listen to what this person said. The industry's problem is that streaming has eliminated its captive customer base, which production studio execs appear to understand, even if actors and screenwriters don't. And I think streaming has taken away a lot of the majesty of the theater from that regard. And, and to me, I also take that as if production studio executives, you know, they understand what's going on. They want to make a movie that looks like that's going to attract people like Barbie. But then you've got the screenwriters and the actors and, and some of the other people that want to inject their personal politics and things and blow it all to hell. So, Mr. Iger recently criticized the actors and screenwriters that are on strike for being, quote, not realistic by demanding significantly higher base pay and a cut of revenue from streamed productions. Among other things, they are, quote, Bob Iger's quote, adding to a set of challenges that this business is already facing that is, quite frankly, very disruptive and dangerous. Well, he's right, says the author of this Wall Street Journal op-ed. Other unions have put their members out of work by issuing excessive demands to businesses facing disruption, be it from foreign competition or from new technology. As much as Hollywood promotes cultural change, it is very much struggling to adapt to technological and business changes, threatening its left-wing megaphones. By projecting their politics into children's movies, Disney employees may end up casting themselves into the woods. When I start seeing articles like this, when I start seeing these kind of things come from the Wall Street Journal, and again, granted it's an op-ed, it gives me some semblance of, of hope that uh, this push is going to continue pushing back, that this push is there for a reason, and it's because when you get into the financial trades like this, these are the, these are the outlets, these are the trades, these are the newspapers, the magazines, the websites, what have you, the op-eds that get, that get read by the financial world 
obviously the Wall Street Journal, especially the Wall Street Journal. And we've seen articles, Pro, you and I have covered in the last few weeks, that, you know, from Fortune magazine, other Wall Street Journal articles. Now this one is is the most egregious uh, against Disney that we have seen. Just, today. just wait till they realize what's going on with the parks. That's coming too. Well, yeah, and and we've seen articles talking about the parks. You know, the problem in the parks, and I know a lot of them are they're hedging right now, Pro. And I'm sure you've seen this as well. I'm, I'm here to tell them, hedge no more. You can right. let loose. I've been there. Let loose. Right. Well, no. What I was going to say was what they're hedging about is they're saying that, well. Comcast Universal is having a, a soft summer as well, although it doesn't seem from what I have, my, well, yeah, I was going to say, from my casual observation from folks like you and others that have been there, our friends at Park Hop and a place like that, yeah, maybe maybe the, the numbers for Universal are not as robust as they're used to, but they don't seem nearly as deflated as Disney's. And folks, we're going to find out in just a few days, four days as a matter of fact from now, be here, live coverage, Comcast, Universal earnings call, and then the Walt Disney Companies is on Wednesday, August 9th. So what, what day is this I, I need to be on here with you? This is the 27th. I believe that's Thursday this week. Thursday what time? Uh, it is an after-market call, so we will start at okay. 3. All right, folks, we'll be there. Let me let me double check as I say that. It's it's on my calendar in my while, phone. While you do that, let me just yeah. say, Valiant, that... Yeah. Uh, Your thoughts you know, on this. Yeah. The, the box office has dropped 70% from 2019 to 2023. Anytime mm -hmm. you have a business that drops 70%, you are in crisis. Mm -hmm. Streaming, they dropped uh, hundreds of thousands of subscribers in North America last quarter. They're core subs, yes. We're, we're looking at a real problem coming up this quarter because they've already forecast they're going to lose $800 million. That's not what was supposed to happen. Why is that happening? We'll have to wait to see what they tell us and then we'll dig into the truth. But I'm here to tell you now, I've been at the parks a lot, you know, and I, I'm someone who's been there many, many, many times. And, but, but this was an extended stay to really do some investigating. Uh, the parks are at the edge of real crisis there. Th this is, this is not sustainable. They have had an absolute collapse in quality, in personnel, in, I mean, this is just incompetent and something has to change and it needs to change fast or they're going to be in a, in a dramatic emergency here. And I'm not, I'm not speaking hyperbolically. I'm telling you right now, when construction walls have been up at one of their theme parks and it's, it's almost non-navigatable, I'm going to make that word up because you can't get from <laughs> one place in the park to another because of all the construction and those construction walls have been up so long that the paint is chipping off the construction walls, you've got a problem. You've got big problems. Ready.